You know, I want to switch gears a bit, and I want to tell you uh, some of the things there's being said on our at t text line. A uh, texter from the 508 area code says, God bless you, Derek. I'm now a 42-year-old mom of two boys. When I was a freshman at Bishop, Bishop Connolly High School in Fall River, you came by to tell us your story. It affected me deeply. I have never smoked, drank, or done drugs ever thanks to you. Um, was that your mission later in life? Okay, I tell t- the story and make I, sure nobody else I was like you. I tell you what, the truth was, uh, yeah, Mike, uh, nothing I ever did was more rewarding than the 12 years I spent uh, doing schools. They talk to the kids in the sixth grade, seventh and nine, seventh and eighth. They're, they're different than sixth. Uh, ninth and tenth are different from eleven and twelve. You don't have a car yet, <laughs> so ninth and tenth. But I, I was. Uh, the kids are astute. They're bright. They're quick. They, they know what they're talking about. Uh, uh, an advertisement, uh, alcohol, uh, just constantly cigarettes bombard them. Uh, not so much cigarettes anymore, but. They bombarded them all the time. Uh, they weren't trying to get you or me. They they already had you and me. They were trying to get a, t- a 12-year-old kid to do their product. Uh, something has to happen there. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a sin, but when you see a young kid and the bulb goes off, the light goes off, yeah, I don't, I don't want to do drugs. I don't want to drink. Uh, how, do I, how do I handle my life then? How do I handle fear? How do I handle uh, rejection? How do I faith? They're just faith. I'm not. I don't believe in organized religion. Just faith. There is something stronger inside of you if you just dig down, just dig down deep enough, uh, and say, "Just you know, God help me." When was the first time you stopped drinking, and what was that uh, battle like? Uh, temptation, I'm sure. Oh, you know, falling God, off, oh, back my. on, off and on. When's the first time? And then tell us about that journey. Everybody says to me, "What was your worst day? What was?" Uh, what was uh, every day is your worst day? Well, I had a I had a I had a girl tell me once, and I had and Bob Yor tell me once, you're an alcoholic, and 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 he says full blown done, no no dispute, it's over. Your liver has uh, very 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 little length to go. Uh, you got to clean up your act, uh, and you can't. You feel like you you feel like worthless. I just can't stop. I, I how can I just just this one just this one? I'll quit tomorrow. No, it doesn't work. You just gotta suck it up and say I quit. And hey, if the good Lord's with you, so be it. You, you can't get sober without family and friends. Yeah, you tell some amazing stories in there at some of your lowest points, and I wonder if you thought they were your lowest points because from the outside. We're all thinking, oh, there's Derek Sanderson. He gets whatever he wants any single night. He's having the, the life that uh, probably every young guy would want to have. You tell stories in there. You were so out of it that you're with this woman. You have been with her for a while. She asks you for some money because she needs some money. You dole out like 1500 bucks to her. She locks you out of the apartment, basically says she's calling the police on you. And yeah. you thought that was love, didn't you? Yeah. I said, well, and I tell you what, at the end of the day, probably the best thing ever happened to me. It just was, it's, it's time to grow up. Uh, you have to build, you know, we, you're listening to all sorts of things. You build your house on rock, not sand. Uh, I didn't have my house built on anything but sand and basically water. Uh, you know, so uh, you, you've got to be, you've got to be secure about, yourself now i am sober and i haven't drank since 1980 uh but really in, in the end of the day i don't i don't it's it's a an arm's length away it just it isn't very far and uh it's a disease there's no cure it's uh none if you uh all you have to do is pick up all you have to do is use and every day, you know, when you win it the first time you quit, Michael, like you said, you figure you're good. You're good for a day. You're good for two. You're good for five. You go for seven. Ah, I can beat this. And eighth day, you have one. Boom, gone. No one knows what triggers compulsion. No one knows. Doctors don't know. And I've talked to many, many guys, uh, that many doctors, have, and they mean their best. 
No one knows what triggers compulsion. AA tells you the best. Alcoholics Anonymous don't pick up, right? If you have a fear, call your sponsor. Get active, get a sponsor. You were uh, extremely complimentary in this book to Bobby Orr. Basically, you said that Bobby Orr pretty much saved your life. He did. He did. He, you know what? He, you know what? He, you ever notice when you when you go uh, when you do something and it's off the wall or whatever, you always got that one ace in a hole. You always got that. I said, no matter how bad I go, if I stay alive and don't go to prison, go go to jail, I can always call Bobby. Oh, oh geez, God, what a major phone call that would be. There's rules come with that phone call. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm not a rules guy. <laughs> I said, oh, geez, he didn't want me to do this, this, and this. He said to me one day, it was probably the greatest thing anyone ever said to me. He said, listen, uh, clean up your act. I know you can. Uh, all my life I've worked on uh, my life, and I'll give you all my credibility. I'll give you all my contacts. I, You know, I just want you to clean up your life. And and I at the end of the day, uh, uh, Bobby Orr included is great, a fabulous a guy as he is. Uh, how long do I stay sober? You know, I what happens, man? Men are about a quarter inch deep, about forty miles wide. We know what turns us on. We know what motivates us. We know what we know what moves us. And then all of a sudden, there's this woman stands there, and she says. I'm it, and she's it, and like she's the rules committee or something. It's like okay, uh, my wife Nancy gave me two two the greatest kids in the world, Michael and Ryan. If you don't text, you can't talk to them. But <laughs> you know, and 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 she gave me purpose. She gave me she gave me uh, my sons. She gave me a uh, home. She gave me bills. You gotta pay this. <laughs> I, uh, so, uh, 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 what do you want to pay that for? You, because we have to pay this. And, you know, it's just stability. It's just what we need.